In the decades after the Civil War, an estimated 100 all-black towns were settled across the United States, most are long gone. But Martha Teichner visits one of the first and last that's still fighting to hold on. It's only the telling that makes sense of these old photos of Eatonville, Florida. And the great teller of Eatonville's story was anthropologist and noted writer Zora Neale Hurston, who grew up here. Joe Clark's store was the heart and spring of the town. Men sat around the store on boxes and benches and passed this world and the next one through their mouths. Third generation Eatonville resident N.Y. Nathiri heads the association to preserve the Eatonville community. Joe Clark is which one? Standing at the left. Joe Clark was the mayor and actually the founder of the town of Eatonville. In 1887, that it even happened was remarkable. After the end of the Civil War, formerly enslaved African Americans flocked to Central Florida to work. White property owners refused to sell them land until Joe Clark convinced two white Northerners with homes in the area, Louis Lawrence and Josiah Eaton, to make available plots they could buy in what became Eatonville one of the first black towns to incorporate. There was a lot of resistance uh, from the surrounding communities uh, because if they could incorporate, that meant that they could vote, they could have their own uh, law enforcement, they could manage their own business. Everett Fly is a landscape architect who has spent more than four decades researching black towns. By 1915, there are less than 60 incorporated black towns in the entire United States. How many of those 60 are left? I think probably 20, 25 is all that's left. More than 90% of it is about racism. It's everything from, oh, it, it's not important, or they won't know the difference if we move them out or erase them. No one's gonna do anything. Eatonville today is struggling the median income here, around $27,000 a year. This family dollar is the only store. There's no supermarket, no gas station, no pharmacy. So many of the black towns have disappeared. What's different about Eatonville? What we have the ability to do here is to leverage the genius of Zora Neale Hurston and the authenticity of Eatonville as a cultural and historical space. Zora tourism exists already. Just enjoy the Zora Festival. The Zora Festival, Nathiri's preservation group puts on every year before COVID regularly attracted over 50,000 people. Fewer now. But Eatonville would like to leverage something else. This land, 100 acres, 10 minutes from downtown Orlando, half an hour from Disney World, valued at more than $20 million in 2019, certainly worth much more now. As a small community of 2,500, it's sitting on the largest undeveloped parcel of land in Orange County. It's sitting in a very sweet position geographically. Nathiri's opinion, Eatonville's survival will depend on who wins the fight over this land, which is as closely tied to its past as it is to its future. The trouble is, the town doesn't own it, and never has. This is an insult. This is an insult, no trespassing keep out. Once, it was part of a 300-acre campus that occupied about 40% of Eatonville. The land was donated by philanthropists to a trust which operated the Robert Hungerford Normal and Industrial School, a private boarding school established in 1899 to provide vocational education to black students in the segregated South. This is when I was in high school. I was voted uh, May Day Queen. By the time Vera King went there, it was a black public school. This looks like one of the original boarding school it buildings. It is. We had classes in that building. 
In 1951, the Orange County School Board bought Hungerford from the trust that owned it. For a little over $16,000, the school board got all 300 acres, but with this important restriction. The land still had to be used for the education of black children. This is me at Hungerford. For 30 years, Vera King worked at the high school that was built on the site. Now it's gone, too, along with 200 of those 300 acres. If we aren't careful, Eatonville is going to be extinct. King, 85 years old, an Eatonville native, resents what happened when the Orange County Public Schools started selling off parcel after parcel of the Hungerford property, getting the courts and the trustees again and again to cut the number of acres required to be used for educating black kids. So now it's zero. They really profited from it, from those sales. The Orange County school system was paid nearly $8 million in those deals. You have hashtag land, land back. back on your sleeve. Yes. Nobody has made enough noise, and nobody has demanded the land back. Julian Johnson isn't the only Eatonville resident who thinks the Orange County Public Schools ought to just give the land to Eatonville as a kind of restitution. This is economic justice that we're fighting for. Land is economic justice. It's about demanding it back. You've done the people wrong over and over. So, with those last hundred acres set to be sold on March 31st to a developer, for $14 million, well below their last appraised value. Johnson helped to mobilize for a showdown. The streets are talking, the people are talking, and the people are angry and furious. The only control Eatonville has over what gets built is through its zoning and planning. Last month, the town council met to vote on changes that would clear the way for this, a new community of more than 350 homes and apartments. Once the project is built out, it'll offer shopping, dining, entertainment options for, uh, for residents and visitors to partake and enjoy. The packed room didn't see it that way. Quite simply, this development will erase this living, thriving, historical community. For y'all to come and put all this stuff up here and think we as black people are gonna be able to stay here, shame on yourself. We're gonna be outnumbered and I want you guys to vote no. They did. But the developer can still buy the site and build, so long as it's something consistent with Eatonville's vision for the town's survival. In a statement to Sunday morning, the Orange County Public School System reaffirmed its commitment to go ahead with the sale. No word yet from the developer. For Eatonville residents, a lawsuit may be next. A last stand in a losing war? Not if they can help it. This is sacred land. It's special for us. It's who we are. And we're not going to let them take it away from us. No.